Hi, my name is Robert. This video is designed to give you step-by-step -step detailed instruction on completing the task at hand. Visit my YouTube channel and watch my disclaimer video. And please like, share, and subscribe. I hope you find the information you're looking for. Thank you very much for watching. I'm working on this 2001 Subaru Outback Limited uh, 2.5 motor. It's having some drivability issues. I think it's with the fuel vacuum system. But in the process of fooling with that, I pulled one of the spark plugs and learned that it had platinum plugs in it. This car is designed to run on the copper tip plugs. So I'm going to go ahead and toss in a set of the copper tip plugs. The thing that inspired me to pull one of these plugs is that uh, the car has been running a little rough, idling a little rough, and it also had a misfire code at number one. Here are the tools I used to replace the plugs on this Subaru 2.5 four-cylinder engine. I use a magnet to pull the plugs out of the wells. I got a torque wrench here that has a half-inch adapter on it, so I had to get the half-inch to three-eighths inch adapter. I used uh, several extensions to reach down places. I got a ratchet wrench with a swivel. You don't have to use the one with the swivel, but it makes it a little easier. Sometimes the plugs are pretty tight, and with the long handle on that one, it was easier to break it. If you used a short ratchet wrench, you might want to break her bar. The socket wrench, long needle nose pliers to get the uh, hoses off of the water bottle, windshield washer bottle, a 10 millimeter and a 12 millimeter socket for miscellaneous bolts. The engineers that designed this car designed this car to run on your regular copper tip plugs. So that's your old school regular copper tip plug if it decides to come in focus. Uh, this car is designed to run on these. I think it will run well on it, uh, the owner's manual say, for 60,000 miles. Somebody in their, uh, I guess, eagerness to do what they thought was better for the car installed these platinum tip plugs. Now, I'm not a believer that uh, platinum plugs are better than a copper tip plug, especially if the car is designed to run with the copper tip plugs. So, I wouldn't be upsold on platinum, double platinum, triple platinum, lithium iron, titanium, you know, suede, leather, whatever. I would try to always install what the manufacturer and engineers recommends for the car. When it comes to spark plugs, as you can see, it's listed what plugs are recommended by the dealer. And it says right above it that they recommend the dealer replace the plugs because a few of them are hard to access. Uh, a lot of people experience drivability issues with cars that are designed to run with the copper tips uh, because I think, you know, it may run good for a couple of months, a couple thousand miles, and then the ignition system is strained trying to fire these platinum tip plugs. I could be wrong. That's just my theory. But I hear people over and over again complaining about drivability issues with platinum plugs on cars that was designed to run uh, copper tip plugs. So if your car is designed to run copper tip plugs, put copper tip in it. You don't want your ignition coils and other parts of your ignition system strained trying to fire these uh, platinum plugs. I know it takes a different amount of watts or amperage or whatever to run them. So just stick with the basics. On this Subaru, you have two plugs here, one there, which is the one I got out, one back there behind that vacuum tube, which is going to be impossible for me to get out without me removing whatever this uh, plastic box is. Now on the other side of the motor, it looks like there'll be little difficult to get out. There's one down there and one behind it. Uh, I hope I don't have to remove that washer bottle, but I may. I'll see and let you know. But uh, next thing I'm going to do is remove this tubing here. Uh, some kind of plug is already removed from there. So I'm going to try to work this tubing out. First, I'm going to unplug it there. And then I'm going to unplug it here, see if it lifts out. And then remove this box down here, see what that takes. 
this part here just simply unplugged and lift out of the way now I'm gonna see if this piece will lift out looks like it has a bolt right there looks like maybe a 10 or a 12 I'm gonna go ahead and pull that out removing that one bolt did allow that to be removed now I have good access to that other spark plug so I'm gonna go ahead and pull that wire and pull that plug if you see the ignition coil on top of the motor here it's labeled one two three four so I'm assuming this is cylinder one this is cylinder three on the other side the front one is cylinder two and the back one is cylinder four so if you have a misfire cylinder one this one up front is the one that's misfire I'm a person that believes in checking the spark gaps but there is no specification for the spark plug gaps in the manual in the specifications or on any tag under the hood sometimes you can find a tag under the hood somewhere that tells you the spark plug gaps but none of these tags tell I'd like to verify the spark plug gaps but I'm not going to be able to hear I checked the gaps and they're at 0 .035 so I'm going to go ahead and install them when you're putting the spark plugs in any motor it's a good idea not to drop them and not to even drop them in the spark plug hole so try to slide them down there gently use needle nose pliers or whatever you can also uh, hand tighten them in first you don't want to cross thread them and normally spark plugs are torqued to 18 foot pounds okay I have those spark plugs torqued down it's good to put your electrical contact grease on it if you have it on the tips of the plug or the tips of the wires plug the wires back in I'm gonna bolt this first box in and then plug that intake tubing system back in to get to these two spark plugs number two and four over on this side I'm gonna go ahead and pull this uh, windshield washer reservoir looks like I got two 10 millimeter bolts there look like somebody's already replaced them I'm gonna unplug these two wires uh, one's probably for washing the rear and the other is probably for washing the uh, the front and then I'm going to disconnect those two tubes going to those bottles hopefully they won't leak and I'll be able to lift that out so I can have easy access to these spark plugs with the tubes disconnected from the pump it still leaked uh, windshield washer fluid from the pumps it just was draining out so I hurry up and lifted the bottle out and tilted it back so I wouldn't lose no more of the washer fluid now I have better access to those spark plug holes I'm going to go ahead and pull the wires, pull the plugs, and replace them. Well, got a little bit of issue on the driver's side. Both of the uh, plugs on the driver's side has oil on top of them, which means probably means that the valve cover gasket is starting to leak on this. Wasn't a lot of oil, but number four had more than number two, so I may end up and replacing the valve cover gasket on this pretty soon okay I got the new plugs in and torqued down and the wires plugged in when you're working on this driver's side be careful that you don't hit your wrench on a positive battery cable you may want to insulate it with a rag or something but it is real close now I'm going to lower the windshield washer bottle back in place plug in the two lines plug in the two connectors and bolt it in and I'll be done if you feel that this information was beneficial, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can also subscribe to my channel so that you can get notification of future videos that I post. Visit my channel. I have all types of do-it-yourself videos there. You can leave questions here and I'll try to respond to them as quick as possible. You can also visit my website at robertspinner.com. Thanks again for watching.